Oh, even seals have to socially distance now. <laughs> I'm Lou and this is Lily Roche and for the first video of 2022 we're in a slightly different environment as you may have noticed. We're feeling very very grateful for living where we do and having beaches relatively close by that have amazing seal colonies. At this time of year the seals will come up onto the beach to have their pups and hundreds and hundreds of seals will be found together as a colony hanging out on the beach like they are here. <laughs> So as I was saying before my little seal pup uh, got upset, <laughs> um, lots of people come from all, all around to see this amazing sight of the seals coming up and being on the shore and the very cute seal pups with their white fluffy coats and it, lots and lots of people want to come and see this amazing spectacle of nature. And I guess the reason I'm sharing this with you is to me this is a really hopeful thing and I believe it's kind of linked to the biophilia hypothesis which I'm sure some of you have come across but the biophilia hypothesis was something that Edward Wilson, an evolutionary biologist, uh, put forward in, back in the 80s um, about humans having a, uh, like a intrinsic core genetic basis for their love of the natural world that is kind of written into our DNA to be connected with nature, to have a love and an attraction for other living beings. And I guess that kind of makes sense if you're looking at it from an evolutionary perspective. After all, you know, it's been thousands and thousands and thousands of years we've lived out in nature. We are nature. We are part of the web of life and we've evolved to, to be in it, to connect with it, to be surrounded by other living beings. It's just a blink of the... It's just a blink of an eye in evolutionary terms since we've kind of cut ourselves off from that and come indoors. And so even though we live in times where we might consider there to be a lot of disconnection from nature, from each other, uh, from even ourselves, and perhaps particularly in the last couple of years with the pandemics increasing that isolation even further, we've still in our DNA got the potential to connect through biophilia. And so things like this amazing wildlife spectacle of the seals kind of somehow awakens that in people. Um, I guess you could say the same for when people uh, you know go to see amazing things like the Northern Lights or Yellowstone National Park with the geese isn't it? There's still that core desire um, for awe and wonder and connection. I've often thought even simple things like keeping pets and doing gardening are a slightly perverted sort of, <laughs> I don't mean perverted in that way, I mean perverted as in changed, um, a, a slightly changed sense of biophilia, you know, where maybe instead of just connecting, there's this desire for humans to control things in terms of pets and gardening, but it's still biophilia expressing itself in this modern day um, age of confusion, I suppose, confusion and disconnection, but it's still there, which is where there is that glimmer of hope. And I guess as far as school leaders, right, so if you see people's faces as they look at the seals, that awe, that's something that touches us at a kind of primitive, primal level, it's like an ancestral memory awakening, right, that's happening when they see the seals. But it can happen at 
something very, very simple uh, in, in the back garden or in the local park or in the woodlands. See a tiny ant come up out of the crack in the pavement carrying uh, like a little egg sac. I can remember from my own childhood because I, I grew up in kind of suburban London um, where there wasn't a massive amount of wild space, certainly no wilderness. We used to play out in the street, which was kind of mainly concrete, apart from one little roundabout thing that we called the island. And I remember watching these ants for some time, and then this amazing time when the ants all came out with wings one day. And that was brilliant. I can still remember that from my childhood. So it doesn't have to be this big wildlife event to inspire awe and wonder. It's something that we can do every day by just stepping outside. And as for school leaders, we're in a fantastically privileged position where we can help facilitate that. We can help people see the awe and the wonder in the average thing, watching an ant doing its day-to-day -day business, listening to a robin in the bush that kind of, you know, comes there every day. It's a common garden bird, but it's still got wonder and awe associated with it. And so maybe that's how we heal people uh, from this isolation and this disconnection. We've got to help them find the awe and wonder in the day-to-day -day nature, the nature that's happening all of the time all around us. I mean, coming to places like this is amazing and seeing those seals is a privilege, no doubt. And I love to do it. Every year we have to come and see the seal pups. But it's not always accessible to everybody um, if you're not able to get to places like this. And also sometimes too many visitors to more sensitive wildlife spaces can start detrimenting the wildlife. So there is a balance perhaps to be had. So helping people see the awe and wonder and connecting in their own gardens, in their own parks, in school grounds. Actually also to some extent might help protect and conserve, conserve more delicate areas or delicate kind of wildlife um, around, around where we live. So just some food for thought there. <laughs> Biophilia is still going strong within the human species. I have no doubt about it. And we just need to fan the flames of our biophilic DNA and we'll get everybody out there connecting. It'll be brilliant. Have you got some examples of where you've helped people see the awe and wonder in average things? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel so you can join us again in the woods next time or the beach next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Connecting with nature and thinking about biophilia, going to see the seals fits the criteria. From looking at ants and listening for bees, think about this the next time you head to the trees or seas. <laughs>